Hi everyone, I just want to work up, this is the third video on um, you know, talking about causal inference in terms of uh, trying to figure out what the effect of being an econ major is on starting salary. And this is essentially where we left it off last time, where this first difference here between these two expected values, that's observed. That's the observed difference in starting salaries between the econ majors and the non-econ majors. Okay. Now, the point I made last time was you can go ahead and break that up into two things. This is the average causal effect is the first difference right here. So this is the average causal effect. And this is the observed. Uh, this first term here is observed because it's the average starting salary for those people who choose to major in economics. This second term here is unobserved because it's the average starting salary for people who majored in economics if we could go back in time and have them not major in economics. Okay, So that's the average causal effect. That's what we'd like to be able to estimate or to use this observed difference for. And fix a couple of those things. All right, But it's polluted by this uh, selection bias. And the selection bias is the difference between the expected starting salary oops, is diff the difference between the expected starting salary for those people who did not uh, major in economics and this is observed right here and the starting salary for those people who, who majored in economics if we could go back in time and have them not major in economics which is unobserved so the selection bias is unobserved okay all right, so let me just actually go ahead and continue to erase some of these things. So the problem is we can't observe everything in here that we care about. So this, the, the observed difference in means up here, so this is the observed difference in uh, means, that's equal to the average causal effect plus the selection bias term. And this is the selection bias, and we can't observe the selection bias directly. Okay, so the problem is it's this darn selection bias. So, for example, suppose we take a look at this difference up here and say it's ten thousand dollars. So the difference in starting salaries for econ majors and non-econ majors is ten thousand dollars. We can't say that's because these individuals majored in economics that they get a starting salary, a higher starting salary, because the observed difference is equal to the average causal effect here plus the selection bias it may very well turn out that this uh, selection bias is positive in the following sense. Suppose the expected starting salary for econ majors, if you could go back in time and have them not major in economics, just so happens that it's greater than the observed expected starting salary for non-econ majors. Okay. Suppose this is a positive selection bias. In other words, those people who majored in economics were going to have higher salaries anyway compared to the people who don't major in economics. This could happen for a variety of reasons. Maybe you just think econ majors are more mathematically adept than uh, non-econ majors. And as a result, if the marketplace values mathematical ability, then they were going to earn higher salaries anyway, regardless of whether they majored in economics or not. Well, then there's going to be a positive, the selection bias is going to be positive. And as a result, this observed difference in starting salaries is going to be the result of two things. The causal effect of majoring in economics plus the positive selection bias. So if the observed difference between, uh, or difference in salary between econ majors and non-econ majors is $10,000. It's unclear if that's a causal effect or due to the selection bias. Okay? And if unless you know the magnitude of the selection bias, it's impossible to know whether majoring in economics is going to increase your salary at all. It could be the causal effect is $0, and it's just more intelligent people, more adept at mathematics, choose to major in economics for whatever reason, in which case the entire you know, higher income we observe for econ majors is due to the selection bias. Or it could be the you know, selection bias is only $5,000. So half the observed 
um, difference between majors, uh, starting salaries for econ majors and non-econ majors is due to the selection bias, and the other half is due up here to the average causal effect. Okay. The important point here is that, in general, when you observe differences in means between two groups, you can't necessarily say that's due to the different characteristics between those two groups because, <coughs> excuse me, because individuals get to choose their major. And if uh, students who are more adept at mathematics or who just have higher ability on average than other students choose to major in economics, then maybe what we're observing is not the effect of being an economics major on their starting salary, maybe what we're observing is the fact that they were just better students to begin with. Okay, It's a very important point. Now, on to, uh, let me erase this, let me talk a bit about the importance of random assignment. Okay, So, this type of problem, that type of selection bias problem I mentioned, that happens a lot in observational data when people get to choose what they're going to go ahead and major in. However, random assignment solves this problem. Okay, so, oops, random assignment. Solves this problem. Oops, solves. Oh, let me erase this. This is not very pretty. Random assignment solves the problem. Okay, now why is that? Meaning, if you could somehow randomly assign people to economics major and others to um, other majors, then the problem would be solved. Okay, why is that? Because if people are truly random, then there's nothing systematically different about econ majors. In other words, about econ majors. In other words, people who are not strong in mathematics could not avoid the economics major, and people who are really strong in mathematics couldn't choose uh, the economics major. Now, they might end up in there on ra by random chance, but the point is you don't get this type of sorting where students who are very uh, poor at mathematics might choose to major in something else and people who are very strong in mathematics might choose economics as a major. Okay, And also, this is true not just based upon math ability, but on every conceivable uh, dimension that you think might be important for starting salary. As a result, if there's nothing systematically different about economics majors and non-economics majors, then the expected starting salary for economics majors, if you could go back in time and assign them to another major, is exactly going to equal the expected starting salary for those people who weren't economics majors. If that's the case, if you go back, the selection bias is zero. If the selection bias is zero, then the observed differences in starting salaries between econ majors and non-econ majors is going to be driven entirely by the average causal effect. Okay. All right. So what have we done here? Well, I've done uh, so what I've tried to do is just introduce you to the problem of trying to make causal inferences from observed differences in um, means between groups. Okay. Now, we often want to say, hey, people who went to, you know, University X had, or people who majored in economics have a higher starting salary than those who didn't, or maybe people who majored in economics have a lower starting salary than those people who majored, you know, who did not major in economics. And we often want to say, well, that's caused by the, uh, by the economics major. That may or may not be the case. That will be the case if selection bias is zero. And the selection bias is going to be zero if you've got experimental data where you can randomly assign people to the economics major. However, if you have observational data, which is what we have in real life, then the selection bias is going to exist. And sometimes you'll know the, whether the selection bias is positive, and sometimes you'll know if the selection bias is going to be negative, and that can be useful information, which we'll talk about later on in the course. But sometimes you don't know whether the selection bias is positive or negative, so you don't know whether the observed difference that you're looking at overstates or understates the actual causal effect. 
or the average causal effect. Okay? So selection bias is one type of what we call simultaneity or endogeneity bias that we run into in economics. And these biases can make it very difficult uh, to make causal inferences with observational data. And so a lot of what we're going to talk about in this semester is just how do we go ahead and make those types of causal inferences when the only thing we really have is observational data. And so that's the, it in the way of introduction for the course, and uh, we'll get into some of these issues later on.